Soul. Better Call Saul is starting, starting to turn the Breaking Bad corner, I think. And especially with the way of how season four ended. Spoiler alert. And we're beginning to see in this season a lot more overlap with the origins of how a lot of things came to be in Breaking Bad. Like things that ex- existed. For example, the um lab where Walter White and uh cooks for the Pollos Hermanos guy, Frank, in the you know, like that secret entrance from the laundromat place. Like you get to see in Better Call Saul the way that place was built and what it took to create it, basically. Hector Salamanca in Better Call Saul is, you know, fine and well and a uh, drug dealer that is rising to the ranks and or at least trying to. And you find out how he becomes paralyzed, which he is all throughout uh, Breaking Bad. And it's pretty much the doing of my boy Nacho, which I don't remember from Breaking Bad, but I really like his character in Better Call Saul. So I'm assuming he gets clipped sometime next season. And I really think that next season might be the last, or they might stretch it out to a sixth season. But uh, next season definitely might be the last of Better Call Saul, in, if I had to guess. And it's I'm just saying that because the way it ends is that Jimmy McGill which is a.k.a. Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad. He's disbarred, or not completely disbarred, but suspended and loses his uh, license to practice and for about a year, year and a half, or something like that. And then he has to like appeal it after that year and a half and show that he's you know a productive member of society and he's able to practice again, et cetera, et cetera. So what he does is at the end... And this is like the big reveal of how Jimmy McGill becomes Saul Goodman is that he uh, wins his appeal finally after like a second attempt and then um, says that he wants to practice under a DBA and that DBA is obviously Saul Goodman. I feel like in this season you get a lot of what made Jimmy McGill, what broke what was the straw that broke the camel's back? And what made Jimmy McGill turn into Saul Goodman finally? Because uh, he he always had this like shady kind of side to him. This willing to do underhanded things kind of side. But was and you know is by all accounts a, you know, a good guy. Cares about his, his girl Kim. And uh, took care of his brother. In terms of like his sickness. And like mental issues, but then his brother uh, passes away, and he held those feelings uh, about his brother uh, passing uh, pretty close to his chest, and didn't show emotions about it to the point that uh, his girl Kim was worried about him, wanted him to go see a psychiatrist, etc. And I feel like he always wanted to make his brother proud but never felt like he did, never felt like he was good enough. And then when he died, it kind of like resented the fact that he died and he would just like never be able to to um show him that, you know, he was good enough. The shit is that what he was great at, what he was really good at was those shady scamming type of 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 things that he probably wanted his brother to like see the genius in some of his schemes and you know he never did because his brother was very like on the straight and narrow and that actually reminded me a bit of if you guys remember from the movie Boiler Room which is one of my favorite movies where Seth tells his father which is a judge that you know he ran this legit business and that his dad had to be you know, impressed if he just would have like stepped foot in the casino one time. It was an illegal, you know, card game uh, by Queens College that he set up to like service the Queens College kids. 
and you know that's how he was like paying his way through school and making his money and paying his rent and stuff like that and you know he had a couple of employees and uh uh payroll and and a client list and you know he had like a illegitimate a legit illegitimate business and he felt that if his father at least saw how he ran it and didn't just see it as like the stigma of you know being in a legal card game that he would have been proud of him in some weird way and if he let jimmy felt that way about his brother in uh better call saul then his not his realization that he wouldn't be able to to you know live up to whatever ideals uh, his brother had um of him his way to rebel against that and was also a way to rebel against the justice system in and of itself was to just double down with the whole you know scheming and scamming thing and his brother was kind of like a manifestation of the justice system to him because he was you know joe law and the season ending the way it did kind of just highlighted the fact that he's like yeah you know what fuck this i'm going all in on this other side and it was a pretty dope season but like i said i think it's coming to an end a fifth season that's a touch more higher paced than the fourth one was would be great um even though you know the fourth season was really good don't get me wrong but i just mean that i could see them doing a fifth and a sixth season uh just to lay everything out um but if they do it a bit more higher pace they can wrap things up i think in the fifth season cram a few more things into each episode in the fifth one easier said than done right and spoken from a guy that's never in a fucking tv show let alone you know breaking bad one of the greatest tv shows ever followed up by one of the greatest sequels to a tv show ever vince gilligan and uh peter gould hit me up i got some some uh, gems for you guys ironically enough 